Today, I want to talk about why perfectionism will destroy your progress. Now, perfectionism will really keep us stuck in always not feeling good enough, right? Thinking we have to learn more things, right? To feel ready or just busy doing more stuff. But none of those things are actually leading us to get to our goals any faster. Now, as a recovering perfectionist, I know how much perfectionism has been one of the biggest bottlenecks in obtaining success from my own life. And I want you to know that you are not alone. So today I want to show you what I've learned in navigating perfectionism for many, many years uh, and how you can too start really making momentum towards the things that you really want to do without having the perfection monster looming in the corner. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Lydia Lee from Screw the Cubicle, and I help budding entrepreneurs uh, create their dream business without struggling with self-doubt, overthinking, and complicated strategies. So if you're looking to build a business that you love, that's designed from your strengths, your values, and your personality, then be sure to hit subscribe and the bell button to keep tuning in for videos just like this one. In order for us to start to let go of perfectionism and be able to progress more effectively towards things that we care about, we need to actually start to really look at our mindset that we have that is really behind why we are wanting to be perfect and be a perfectionist to start with. And very likely that language, you know, the way you're talking to yourself in your head is what is causing some of these uh, blockages to come up for you, right? When it comes to doing something exciting in the beginning of time when those ideas come to you and then you start to talk yourself out of things, right? Whenever that perfectionism monster comes on board with you. So we kind of want to think about what are you thinking? What are you saying to yourself that is brewing this perfectionism monster, making him grow bigger, right? With these negative self-talk. So does any of this sound really familiar, right? Maybe you're saying, I need to learn more in order to have everything that I think I need to know knowledge wise, right? In order to pursue that thing that I really want to do, right? Maybe that's what you keep playing like a record that you'd never feel like you've learned enough because everyone out there seems to know a lot more than you do. They seem to be a lot more qualified than you are and you are not allowed to do anything at all until you are a perfect expert, right? Does that really sound familiar? I know that voice is always, always in my head, right? As a perfectionist as well. But what you can do is start to really think about saying something a little bit different to yourself and maybe saying it out loud so that it's a little bit more effective for your brain to absorb this new truth. You can start to say, what I know right now is enough to start because I'm going to learn as I go, right? If you ever think about anything that you've ever been an expert about at your job, at learning how to raise babies, as learning how to go through school, right? Whatever it is that you've learned to achieve, you never knew everything right away. You simply started, you enrolled in a course, you went to school, you got an internship, right? You, got ex you gained experience at the workplace in order for you to be promoted, in order for you to get to that next stage of a goal. And starting any, anything new in your life, kind of in this is the same concept, right? So we need to embrace that we just know enough to start with. It's not all we're ever going to know, right? But if I don't start and I don't get the opportunity to learn, I'm just actually always going to stay here, never believing that I have enough knowledge to get started and to go and pursue my dreams. The second thing is to really think about the expectations and particular concrete outcomes that might have actually given you a lot of pressure in believing that and, you know, maybe you're saying to yourself, I need to get to this exact thing to happen for me. If not, I failed, right? If not, I am a loser, right? I am a failure if I don't get this right. So I have to get this right if I do this thing. Now, of course, if you say things like that in your head, right, or out loud, of course, you're basically telling yourself, you got to be perfect. You ain't going to fail. And that is just never going to happen whenever you are trying to become the person right, that you need to become to do the things that you want to do. So we need to reset our expectations for perfect outcomes, right? What if instead we say things like, what if what I'm doing right now is an experiment and I can get real curious about the process, get curious about testing things, kind of playing out there in the playground and seeing what sticks. So the outcome is not to get things right. The outcome right, that you can adjust is I want to actually feel into this activity that I can say no to it later on and choose something else if I want to, right, have a different, redefine that outcome, have a very different outcome that's going to be more healthy and much more realistic 
to be honest, right, for you to actually achieve instead of these concrete faraway outcomes that actually gives you a lot more pressure, right, to deal with than, than, than not. And the truth of the matter is that if you simply decide to start, even if you're not going to get it right, right? You're telling yourself that your dreams and your goals are important to you because you're honoring it with action. And that can be a really, really important uh, fuel that you need to keep going and progress towards your goals, right? It's that giving yourself that pep talk that starting is an act, right? Of honoring your dreams. And that really leads me to the second part of looking at perfectionism. Aim for progress and not perfection, so what is progress? Progress is movement, momentum, what I also call tiny bite-sized actions. And progress is what helps you to build the habits that you need to create momentum towards your goals. But if you're only aiming for, for perfection, right, aiming for one and done, getting it right the first time, you'll never be able to experience the beautiful magic and the beautiful character shaping, right, progress can actually do for you. So when I coach my clients to really be able to reach momentum with things like building a business, transitioning out of corporate, right? Building their dream business and sharing their gifts with the world. We're never focusing on the end goal right away, right? Of that business building goal, goal process. Like I need to get X amount of clients by a certain amount of time, or I need to do, you know, X amount of revenue by this month, because usually when you get started on a project like that, right, when you're starting something from new, this goal seems so far away that it's actually going to demotivate you from starting at all. So we need to kind of parent ourselves to be able to get to much more smaller wins more often in order to train our habits to be, you know, good with that. And also knowing that these small wins are building our confidence along the way. But if you're looking to create a win that is, you know, so large that it's like three to six months down the road and you don't feel smaller wins, right? In the meantime, it's not going to motivate you to keep going, right? So small wins, tiny actions are really the way to go. And when I help my clients out with creating progress and not perfection, I always tell them to focus on movements. In my opinion, movements are so much more effective than big goals. Why? Because movements, movements are things that you can actually control, right? Instead of a huge outcome that you can't control and you're going to procrastinate uh, more when it's sort of too big of a bite to chew, right? So movements are things like um, something, you know, you can do it in five minutes, you can do it in 10 minutes, it's small. So if let's say you're looking for a new client or you're looking to um, access, you know, a particular person to pitch to for your services, instead of coming up with a huge marketing campaign, a movement is that you could direct message a woman that you met in your Facebook group that f had a problem that you know how to solve and offer to help her genuinely and start that conversation, right? A movement could be, hey, I want to look for more. I want to fill my calendar with more podcast interviews to market myself instead of, again, doing this huge bite of landing every podcast right away is one movement is I'm going to look at one podcast I enjoy listening to second movement, find the email, right? Or the contact form on their webpage and third movement, send a pitch email, right? And so if you do those movements repeatedly with multiple different, um, podcast hosts or clients that you want to go for it, can you imagine right? Incrementally, these small movements can really get you to results. So aim for progress, not perfection, and go for movements instead of goals. And lastly, imperfect action is just better than no action at all. So if you keep waiting to take the perfect action, you're going to end up not taking any action at all. And you're really going to start creating that self-fulfilling prophecy all over again, like a cycle of not being good enough to get things done. You can see how that keeps repeating itself, right? So in order to beat perfectionism, we have to be willing to say, I'm willing to take imperfect action that's just good enough for today. So reframe your standards to what is good enough. Good enough is probably what it is that you're capable to do today. You're allowed and you have permission to have an action and it could even be a very powerful action with everything that you have in your resources and in your disposal right now. And know that you can make better decisions with every single action. 
Because you can imagine that when you take an action, you're going to affect a new reality. You're going to have a different outcome right away from taking that action, whether it's learning something new, whether it's learning not what to do, right, or what not to do, right, or learning what to do better. So either way, any imperfect action is always going to progress you ahead in a positive way because it's going to help you to do the next action with more intention, with more mindfulness, right, and more consideration of what can work for you. So I want you to really think about some of the perfectionism things that you've been doing or what are the things in your life that you really want to do, but the perfectionism monster is looming in the background, blocking you from making it happen. And I want you to think about how can you make one action step small enough, so small that it almost feels insulting, right? As my coach Pam Slim will say with her tiny habits movements and tiny habit marketing stuff that she's taught me as well as a business owner, you know, she always says, um, make sure your movement is so small that it's almost insulting to you. <laughs> and I love that analogy because if an action is worth taking and I can do it quickly, and it's easy enough, then you will actually take it and chunk those steps down enough so that you can do it more consistently and more incrementally every single day. So I want to hear from you right now. How has perfectionism uh, blocked your way to start doing something that really matters to you? I would love for you to share it with me in the comments below. Uh, and I hope that you found one of these tips today helpful. And I hope that you too take imperfect action on one of the tips that you learned today. I'll see you next week.